Hi, this is David at Mash IT. Tonight we're going to be doing a review of the new XPS 9310 2-in-1. Now if you've been following our channel, uh, you'll know that last night we uploaded our review of the XPS 13 9310, which is an almost identical model to this, except that it does not have a touch screen and it isn't the 2-in-1, so the folding hinge version. So a lot of the comparisons with this laptop are, is going to be to the 9310 from yesterday's review. So by all means go and watch that review as well. The link is in the comment section down below um, to familiarise yourself with the range of XPS 13s. Now this model is pretty much the same as last year's 9300 2-in-1 and 9300. So again if you are used to the XPS range from last year you can be quite familiar with this range. I'm just going to quickly go over the specs anyway. I've done this already in the unboxings and first impressions, but in case you haven't watched that, it's quite basic. On the left hand side, we have a Thunderbolt 4 port, new for this year, the new standard. A micro SD card slot, good for content creators, although obviously everyone would have preferred a full size SD card slot. And on the right hand side of the laptop, we have another Thunderbolt 4 and a headset jack. And that is basically your port selection with these tiny little thinner light laptops. Now, that is understandable given the size of this little machine. I mean, it is absolutely tiny. Uh, Dell have shrunk these down over the years with the absolute minimal bezel that these are, you know, they look like an 11 inch laptop in a 13 inch, well, sorry, 13 inch screen in an 11 inch laptop. That's quite impressive, especially on this model because this is the two in one. So you want it to be small and compact so that you can actually pick it up and, and write on the screen, flip the screen over. You need something light and compact to be able to do that with, otherwise it becomes uncomfortable. So we're going to take a quick look at the inside of this laptop. There we go. Being the two in one with a touch screen, obviously we have a glossy touch display. It's a really fantastic, this is a 1200p, so 1920 by 1200 display, so the lower end of the two, but it's still an absolutely fantastic display. The reason we chose to get this model in for review is because obviously the 1200p gives much better battery life. And in our opinion, on a 13 inch laptop, 1200p is more than adequate because I, you know, this sort of range, I can't be seeing pixels. The 4K will be a better quality screen, probably a better color gamut, um, and also a slightly higher pixel, well, a lot higher pixel density. But then you take a big hit in battery life. And in my opinion, when you're buying a 13 inch mobile laptop that you wanna be carrying around, battery life to me is more important than a very slightly higher pixel density because it's a 13 inch screen anyway. So 1200p on this, to my eyes, is a good pixel density. So you can see when we look at the battery life later on that this is the trade-off you make and this is why we've chosen this because these do have good battery life. I'll just drop that in now, but we will be going over that in the test later on. Then looking at the actual deck, you've got the usual carbon fiber soft touch finish. This is a lovely finish when you're actually working. You rest your hands on this. It's comfortable, it's soft, it's, it's, you know, it's not cold like an aluminium one. So it's a really nice, comfortable deck to put your hands on to work. Um, the only problem with these is it does absorb your skin oil, so you will need to keep it clean, otherwise they can look a bit messy. Then the keyboard this year, now I think it's a maglev keyboard, but they've certainly improved it if it is, because it feels very, very similar to the 9310 that we reviewed yesterday. It has a slightly different tone to the sound of the keys, but the keys are crisp and responsive with about a, about a millimetre of travel. So it's a nice typing experience. You can, you can hear it's, it's a little bit loud when you're typing, but it's comfortable. And not only is the typing experience very good, the key layout and the key size is also really nice. So you'll find you'll be typing at quite high words per minute if you're a good typist, very quickly on this keyboard. It's a very good, comfortable keyboard to type on. You've got your dedicated cursor keys, and you've got a page up and page down to either side. This is a bit of a blessing and a curse. It's nice having those page up and down, but you can sometimes miss hit them when you're trying to hit the cursor keys. It's also got a three stage white backlight behind this keyboard. Obviously being the black model that we've chosen, the white backlight is absolutely perfect in sort of low light environments. You can also buy this 
in the, I think it's an Arctic white model, so the, the actual white. And although that does look very attractive being white, and we did consider getting that one, the problem we find is a white keyboard with white, white backlight does make it difficult to see the keys unless you are in particularly low light. Um, and having had silver keys with white you know, and white keys with white backlights in the past, I do try and shy away from those. So we did go for the black. We also have a Microsoft Precision trackpad. It's a good size considering this is a 13 inch laptop. It's very responsive. The gestures work really nicely. It's got a nice firm click, but you can click anywhere on the trackpad and it will click. And unlike the XPS 9500, both the models we've had in have had an absolutely perfect trackpad. There's been no play. Uh, they've been absolutely flawless. So I'm hoping that obviously in this year's 13 inch model, they've resolved that issue they had with the 9500. This is a lovely, lovely trackpad to use. So we've obviously talked about the display, but we do also have Windows Hello built into the display, which is a lovely feature. Once you've started using Windows Hello and unlocking it with your face, it's difficult to go back to any other kind of sort of login software. If you're not a big fan of the Windows Hello or you know, you've got you know, low light and it's not picking you up, you also have a fingerprint sensor as well, so you can log yourself in with that too. They're both responsive. This has down firing speakers and we did do a test of the downfiring speakers in our unboxing and first impressions. So that'll be linked in the comment section below as well. So you can go and have a look at that and listen to the actual speakers on this model. They sound very good for downfiring speakers and we're very, very impressed with them. Um, comparing the like 9310 and this model, they both sound very similar with the speakers. They've got lovely sort of mid-range and high ends, just a little bit lacking in bass, which you'll find with most 13-inch laptops. But for podcasts and conference calls, they're absolutely perfect. You can listen to music on them or a movie on them in Netflix, uh, but in all honesty, you're probably going to stick a pair of headphones on if you're going to do some serious music listening on this machine. So enough about the keyboard and trackpad, because obviously you've been seeing yesterday's reviews, you're going to know what this XPS is like. Now we're going to talk about what differentiates itself from the XPS 9310 and that is the two-in-one form factor. You'll notice the biggest difference when you look at this machine are the hinges. You can see these silver hinges here and on the back. This allows you to rotate this laptop 180 degrees. These hinges allow you to swivel the screen completely around behind the laptop. And in doing so, you've then got a tablet. Once you have swiveled the actual you know, the keyboard behind the screen, you can press those keys and they'll no longer register, they're, they're locked off. So when you're lifting it like this, you will feel the keys and it may feel a little bit odd at first, but then you do realize that they're, they're not in use. So you do get used to that quite quickly. But what this gives you is a nice 13.4 inch tablet that you can obviously use your finger with and you can buy a pen for as well if you are into digital art. We're gonna try and get hold of a pen uh, so I'm going to do a, a review as a sort of graphic stylus at a later date as well. So please subscribe if you're interested in seeing that. Now, obviously you can lie it flat on the table. You can just pop it down in temp mode for watching movies or doodling on the screen using your finger and you know, there's a touchpad on the screen. Um, or you can pop it down this way for drawing and again working at a different angle without having the keyboard in front of you. So it's quite a versatile machine. Uh, a lot of people are you know, into this sort of functionality. Me personally, I just like a clamshell laptop because I'm not arty. Uh, I always try, I get a pen out, I buy the pen when it first comes out, I'll do a bit of doodling when I first get the machine and then it just goes away in the bag and I never use it again. So this is completely wasted on me. But my colleague Gary, this machine is likely going to be for him. He is the RT part of Mash IT um, and he's going to be thoroughly drawing and testing on this for a later review from the art perspective. So, on to the performance section. Let's have a look how this little laptop performs.
Okay, so uh, we're looking at the performance of this uh, XPS 2-in-1. Um, now, if you've seen yesterday's review of the 9310, uh, you'll understand what this cooling system is cap uh, capable for, uh, and it was doing a long-term power of 25 watts on the 9310. The strange thing I found with this XPS 2-in-1 is I don't know if it's got a better solution, a cooling solution, or I've won the Dell Thermal Paste Lottery, it's running cooler, quieter, but I'm actually getting a higher wattage. Uh, I'm actually getting 28 watts sustained. Um, this gave me a score, this is just on the optimise, I got a score of 2117 in Cinebench R20. So that's quite a bit higher than the 9310 and that really surprised me. From what everyone had told me before, the 2-in-1 was supposed to run at less wattage than the 9310. So I, I'm not really sure what's going on here. I'm going to do a bit more testing um, and I'm going to try the different profiles. So this is just the second run now. I'm going to just see how long before it throttles down. So you can see we're still getting 28 watts and I'm still getting 32 or 3.2 gigahertz on this CPU. Uh, that runs finished and 21.23. So faster again. This is going to be a third run now. On the XPS 9310 by the third run it was actually starting to throttle down from its 25 watts and I was then getting about 22 watts. So let's just see is this going to keep up or is it going to start throttling down. Keyboard is still nice and cool. There's a little bit of warmth above the CPU like there is on the 9310 we looked at yesterday but it's, it's actually quieter running than the 9310 and again, considering I'm actually getting a high wattage, I'm really surprised by this. Okay, the fans are spinning up a little bit more now. So I've now spun up to well about 40 decibels, so now maybe a little bit louder than the 9310 but we are still getting the 28 watts. So it's 2,104, so a little bit less. That's to be expected. Right, this is the fourth run. Now this is where I was seeing quite a bit of throttling on the 9310. So if we can get through this one at a, a good score, then it, it's, you know, it's definitely handles itself better than the, the 9310 we reviews, which again, I'm just really surprised by. Okay, so it has throttled and we're down to 1,910. So still higher than the 9310, uh, even when it's starting to throttle. And it throttles down to 25 watts. So that's four runs, so I'm quite impressed with that. We're now doing a run on Cinebench on Ultra Mode. Uh, this went, it gave us a maximum of 52 watts for uh, the, the short-term boost. And we're now getting a solid 38 watts. So this is much better behaviour than the 30, uh, sorry, the 9310 laptop we were looking at yesterday. That one throttled down to 25 on Ultra, this one isn't. So I don't know whether it's a difference in BIOS, but this one is, is running much better sustained wattages. Still scratching my head, but also pleased at the same time with the results on this one. So despite running at 36 watts on uh, long sustained. It's still not hot on the keyboard and it's still not particularly loud. Okay, so that's actually given us a score of 2,315 points. That is an absolutely amazing score, uh, especially for just out of the box without any tweaking or anything. This is just the ultra profile. That's right up there with uh, a lot of the 45 watt Intel 6 core processors. That's really quite incredible. So with this performance mode, as per yesterday's 9310, Dell provides the power manager with four different options. Uh, this is the optimized, which is the stock configuration, which you'll use most of the time. The quiet mode, which caps the uh, wattage to the CPU and um, slows the fans down, almost stops them at certain points of that time. And the cool mode, which caps the wattage again on the CPU but allows the fans to run so you get a cooler system but again not as powerful like the quiet mode and then finally the ultra mode so apparently the ultra mode is supposed to like let the CPU run free 
But what we've also found throughout most of this testing is that Ultra is only a few points or percent higher than the optimized. So we really couldn't find much of a difference between the two. So we recommend just leaving it in the optimized mode for most of the time. If you want to see more information on these power modes, please check our video from uh, the 9310 yesterday. There's timestamps in there because we went into quite a lot of detail in that video with the different power modes. And I don't want to waste everybody's time doing the same thing again in this one. So now that we've done the Cinebench benchmarks, we can see what a powerhouse this CPU is in this machine, which is quite a surprise. Um, everybody thought that this 2-in-1 actually ran a lower wattage than the 9310, so it's such a surprise to me that it is actually running a higher wattage uh, and it is very powerful. We've Next we've ran Geekbench 5. This scored uh, 1,511 uh, on a single core CPU test and 5,362 on the multi-core CPU score. Now that was actually slightly lower than our 9310 benchmark yesterday, which is again a bit, a bit random, a bit surprising, but Obviously, it's the way that this Geekbench runs this test. And then the OpenCL, we scored 17,172, which is very, very slightly slower than the 9310 again. But this is good news still for the 2-in-1 users because it does mean that it's pretty much on par with the 9310 on the graphics and the CPU. It isn't throttled in any way to make it a cooler experience. Um, so that means you're getting that amazing Tiger Lake uh, Intel XE graphics and CPU inside of this laptop and it isn't throttled you know, any worse than the 9310 is. So this is again a good 70% or even in some cases 100% faster than the 10th gen Iris Plus graphics. Now onto the actual GPU benchmarks. First of all we ran Time Spy. We got a score of 1,711. Uh, and the graphic score was 1,544. Now this is almost the same as we got in the 9310 yesterday, and it's an absolutely amazing score for uh, an integrated GPU. It blows pretty much every other integrated GPU away that we've used. So really incredible scores. Um, we talked more about it in yesterday's review as well, if you want to watch that one. And with the Fire Strike, we scored 4,894, with a GPU score of 5,367 and a CPU score of 13,388. Now that CPU score was quite a lot faster than the CPU score on the 9310. So this actually ended up being a faster score on Firestrike than the 9310, which again is very impressive. These were all running optimized. Um, I didn't bother putting in the scores for Ultra Mode. It was just a few points faster. It really wasn't worth it, wasting everyone's time going through it all again in Ultra. Next we ran Unigen Valley. This is in the Extreme HD preset. And we got 17.5 frames per second in this uh, benchmark with a score of 732. This is almost identical to the 9310. So, you know, a testament to both these systems being very, very similar, but the two-in-one having slightly better pure CPU performance than the 9310. So overall, absolutely fantastic benchmark scores from this little laptop. Now obviously these are just synthetic benchmarks. Um, we just posted a review of uh, gaming benchmarks from the 9310. It will be almost identical to the game performance on this. So if you are interested to see how this Intel XE graphics benchmarks in actual real games, take a look at that uh, video. I'm going to link it in the comment section down below for you. So now that we've looked at the performance of this laptop and we see what a beast this actual new Tiger Lake processor is, what about battery life? Well, we found streaming this laptop uh, over Wi-Fi with 50% brightness on this 500 nit panel. Uh, we were running some YouTube music with the speakers about 30%. Um, that gave us a battery life of about just over eight and a half hours. So actually slightly less than the matte screened um, 9310 XPS we tested in yesterday's review. But still a really good solid result from this little laptop. So pretty much all day's battery life if you're talking light use. Obviously if you're doing video editing or heavy photo editing or you know, rendering or 3D CAD, whatever, that's gonna obviously kill your battery a lot faster. 
But the good news is, although, you know, um, you may kill your battery a little bit faster, the power supply that you need for this laptop is absolutely tiny. So carrying this with you, you're hardly even gonna notice it in your bag. It's a 45 watt USB-C power adapter. And it is just absolutely tiny, puny little power adapter that you can just chuck that with. It's nice and light, chuck it in your bag, you'll hardly even know it's in there. But that's brilliant, so you're not carrying some big bulky power adapter. When I looked at the Razer Blade Stealth a little while ago, that came with a 100 watt USB-C power brick, and it really was a brick, and it kind of defeated a lot of the purpose of having a little Ultrabook that you're gonna carry with you. In contrast, having a brick this small with your Ultrabook laptop totally makes sense. You know, you've got a nice, small, tiny laptop that you carry around with you. You don't want a big power brick, so this, Absolutely perfect, well done Dell. So, on to the conclusion. This Dell XPS two-in-one version of the 9310 that we've reviewed today, it is an absolutely fabulous Ultrabook machine. As I've said in the, you know, in the beginning, you've got a good keyboard, a good trackpad, a lovely screen, uh, it's a touch and pen enabled. You can flip the screen over. It's got good battery life, amazing performance. Uh, not bad ports, but the Thunderbolt 4, I just wish you had a USB, uh, USB 3 port, but don't I always with most modern laptops. But you need to ask yourself, when you're buying this machine, do you want to be paying an extra 100 pounds or 100 British pounds for the two in one version over the 9310? Because they are very, very similar machines. This one has a glossy display which is touch enabled and pen enabled. That's an absolute positive to a lot of people, but it also brings with it the glossy and glare of a, display, you know, a glossy touch screen display. So if you're using this out in sunlight, you are gonna get glare on this display. Um, and some people do just prefer a matte screen. I personally prefer a matte screen. So if you're not gonna be using the touch or the, you know, the tablet aspect of this two in one, Maybe you should save yourself the hundred pounds and go for the 9310. But if you do think you're gonna make use of the touch screen, if you do like this tent functionality, being able to draw on the machine, popping it down and using it as a tablet, there's a lot of features to love about this two-in-one. It is a really solid Ultrabook that you can use all day, every day. Really fantastic machine. Um, personally, I think both the 9310 and the uh, 2 in 1, both absolutely fabulous machines. So you just need to decide which one you're going to utilize the most and then make, take your pick because you can't go wrong with either. They are brilliant machines. Dell have really, I think, got everything right on this model. Another thing I didn't mention is how quiet they are. I think Dell could have probably, on the ultra performance, allowed the fan to ramp up a bit higher and give you a bit more wattage uh, because it's just so quiet and it's something they may well address in a future firmware let's hope because there's not really a lot of difference between the optimized and the ultra at the moment the optimized you know when you're running it you're getting the 25 or 27 watts on this one uh, cpu performance and it's it's so quiet it's really quiet and comfortable to use it would be nice to be able to switch it to ultra and then maybe have 30 or 35 watts but with a little bit more fan noise so let's hope Dell address that in the future. But as it is, it's a comfortable machine to use on your lap. It doesn't get hot on the keyboard. And it's just a great all around device. So I thoroughly recommend this laptop if you're actually looking to purchase a 13 inch Ultrabook. I hope you've enjoyed this review. If you want to see further content on both this machine and the 9310, please like, subscribe and hit the notification bells because we have quite a few more articles coming up on, on these. We're going to do a comparison of the two together. We're going to do some productivity sort of uh, everyday use on these laptops and we're going to be comparing them against the Ryzen 5 4650U Pro processor and a ThinkPad T14 just to see, you know, AMD versus these Tiger Lake, you know, which is better. Obviously the CPU is going to be better on the Ryzen but what about the GPU? So if you're interested in seeing any of that, please subscribe. Um, those will be coming up shortly. Thank you for watching.